okay now what do we have uh, we have uh, the image uh, and we have uh, the other part uh, which is uh, the rank sorry the uh, nullity right so or the null of a right both turned out to be a sub turned out to be subspaces right one here in the uh, image the other one is the range right okay okay so now uh, let's look at uh, one thing so which is uh, uh, what is known as it's a very important theorem in uh, in linear algebra how many of you have uh, heard of rank nullity theorem heard of it no you should have heard of it in linear algebra right yes or no it's okay i don't uh, bother you you can say at least if you, can you raise your hand if you have heard of rank nullity okay how anyone knows what anyone know what rank nullity is can you tell me yes do you know what rank nullity is ha huh. ha huh. the dimensionality of the right okay so uh, how do you prove that right is the question right so how do you prove Uh, i'll give you a pictorial uh, slightly pictorial proof but uh, again you can convert that into very rigorous proof in a very straight forward manner okay so now uh, let me not state the theorem let's see what we can see now um, i'll write it in a very general form okay so i won't write it as uh, matrix and uh, some r n r m i'll write it as transformation v w okay so this is a vector space v and this is a vector space w okay and you know what nullity is right null and there is a transformation or you can think of transformation as matrix right so what is the null of t it is all those vectors which get mapped to zero right so that is some subspace here right so i'm sure it will get uh, stuck i guess okay so now if this is your null space which gets mapped to zero okay all this gets mapped to zero okay this is a subspace okay now what can i say about uh, this since this is a subspace i have a basis right so let me call v1 v2 etc vm is the are the basis okay by extension theorem or it's in other words replacement i can extend this to the entire space right i can make this as a basis for the entire space i'll add a bunch of other vectors u m or u n such that this is a basis for maybe i'll write it in different colors uh, u1 u2 etc u n a uh, form a uh, basis for v this is clear right okay so uh, of course t v1 is what zero right t v i is zero for all i 1 2 etc m this is very clear right it goes to zero now uh, let's look at what happens to t u1 through t u n what can you say about that yes so what can you say about can you say about um some tun or tu1 tu2 etc tun i know what happens to tv1 tv2 tv1 right it will give me zero what happens to this is definitely doesn't give you zero right for sure right zero does not belong to this that's something that we know right but what can you say about these set of vectors any can you think of something uh, what can you what are the see uh, the moment you say see bunch of vectors uh, what is the first question that you can ask what are the things that we have studied so far as far as vectors are concerned ha huh? don't hesitate you can just even if it's wrong it's okay nobody will feel bad okay ha huh? 
no you bunch of vectors cannot form a vector space right i'll give you two vectors it cannot form a vector space what can you say about two vectors ah linear independence right basis is the next question whether it forms a basis or not but linear independence is a question right um, um is it linear independent right so is it linearly independent how do you verify this let's verify okay so how do you verify that this is linearly independent huh well all that i have to do is take linear combination of these vectors any linear combination equate it to zero then the coefficient should be zero do you agree with this okay now suppose okay suppose right uh, let's say alpha 1 t u1 right yeah so t u1 plus alpha 2 t u2 plus alpha n t u n equal to 0 what can you say about this let's do reverse engineering right we don't know what uh, so if they are linearly independent alpha i should be 0 right clear now what does this imply by linearity i can push alpha 1 inside alpha 2 inside and so on right again by linearity i can add them so i'll not write i'll write directly this thing right suppose uh, the first one is this is true then this is also true what does this imply right so in other words uh, you know it both ways right so if this this is true then this is also true right that's what we have so what can you say about uh, this now looking at this equation what can you say about this guy here it's linear combination of uis so what can you say about the linear combination of uis Huh? So UIs, of course, it depends. So here are the UIs, right? So it's definitely not in. I mean, um, it's it's definitely in V, right? Each of these UIs are in V. A linear combination of UIs should be in V because it's a vector space, closed under, right? So this belongs to V for sure, right? But now, what is that? What is it that I am saying? I am taking an t, operating it on a vector in V to get zero. What can you say about V? This vector, U i should belong to. Can it belong to null of t? No. Why? Right. So it's formed the basis, and we already considered the basis for null and extended it. So this cannot span the other, right? So it cannot be. definitely this cannot be in the span of or in the null right what are the other choices now ha huh? the only possibility is this is zero right hmm so this implies but ui are linear independent this implies alpha is zero right do you agree so that means they have to be linear independent okay is that clear so now when you write the theorem how do you write the theorem of course theorem is clear this is ha huh. so now this is a linearly independent set right now uh, what are these these are nothing but tu1 tu2 tun forms a basis in w right do you agree it forms a basis in w now suppose i take a vector v in v such that tv is not zero right then i should be able to write this as a linear combination right do you agree okay so the second claim is don't worry about this i'll just write this um also for every v not in null of t tv can be written as linear combinations of T U I, okay, right? That's also possible, right? So now, uh, what does that mean? That means, okay, think. I'll write it as think. T U one, T U two, etc. T U N spans image of T. 
Okay, you know what image is, right? It spans the image, and it's linearly independent. What does this imply? Basis, right? Forms the basis for image of T. Now, this forms the basis for image of T. So there are n vectors, right? And now there are m vectors which span the kernel of T, right? When you add them, when you add all of these, you get the dimension of V, right? M plus n is the dimension of V, but that is nothing but dimension of nullity of V T and plus the dimension of image image of T, right? So, okay. Now, I deliberately am I've been a little vague here so that uh, you'll go back those at least those who is supposed to scribe will go back think about it and write okay so this implies dimensionality of null of t plus dimensionality of uh, image of t is equal to m plus n right okay so now let's see. So this is uh, what is called rank nullity, right? Where is the rank and where is the nullity? Nullity is very clear, right? So null of t is all those vectors which gets mapped to zero. Ax equal to zero, right? It's the null, okay? Null. What about this? Can we can you say something about this? Suppose t is a matrix, right? So what can you say about this? What is image of t? First, let's try to understand that. What is image of t? It is all those vectors which gets mapped to a non-zero vector, right? Something like Ax is not equal to zero, right? Do you agree? So such vectors, uh, so image, so sorry, uh, you take any vector x, you take Ax such that it's not zero. So Ax will be your, the set of all such Axs will be your image, right? Now, um, what about null of t? It is all those x such that ax equal to 0, right? So that means I'm looking at basically uh, the linear combinations of columns, which gives me 0, right? Do you agree? You are not supposed to use mobile phone inside, OK? So please don't uh, switch off your mobile phones, right? So now this turns out to be, maybe I'll uh, do one thing. I'll, uh, I'll just state it. Think about it. If you have any questions later on, maybe in the next class, I'll try to answer. So this turns out to be what is called the rank of A. OK. What is this called? Nullity of A, OK, null of A. OK, so this is equal to dimension of the entire vector space. It's n or uh, whatever the dimensionality of A, uh, A is, OK? So this that's why it's called rank nullity term. It's essentially this. Okay. So the, the only thing is uh, think about this also. Why it's called this thing? What is rank, by the way? Number of linearly independent columns. Right. Um, well, it turns out that it's also equal to the number of linearly independent rows. Right. So let's try to. I, I won't rigorously prove, but I'll try to convince you that that is the case. And I will refer you to uh, the notes, wherein uh, notes meaning uh, Savan had shared a link to my notes, right? Uh, there is a very elegant proof of, uh, or very similar proof, OK? So now, uh, let's look at uh, that result. So uh, um, row rank, row rank is number of linearly independent rows equal to column rank, that is the number of linearly independent columns. That's what we defined it to be rank, right? OK, so how do you prove this? Any idea? How do you prove this? Huh? How do you uh, actually prove? How do you prove that uh, row rank equal to column rank? Hmm? Huh? Oh, that's what I'm saying. That's what you're supposed to prove. Row rank means rank of A. I mean, in terms of the rows. 
okay if you are defining your rank as uh, the number of linearly independent columns then rank of a is the number of linearly independent columns rank of a transpose is the number of linearly independent rows of a right so rank of a equal to rank of a transpose that's what okay so good uh, let me also write that it's rank of a which is equal to rank of a transpose so how do you prove this okay so let's look at this okay so i'll give a simple uh, you know let's look at this through an example okay so let's say um, there is a 3 cross 3 matrix i'll write the columns as a1 a2 a3 these are the columns now if i have to write this as linearly so what is rank of uh, this matrix number of linearly independent columns right uh, suppose uh, the number of linearly independent columns of this matrix is 2, not 3, right? 2. It's rank deficient, right? The rank is not 3, it's 2. So now if it is 2, suppose, let's say, V1 and V2 are the basis for the columns. That means you take any column vector, I can write it as a linear combination of V1 and V2. That's what it means, right? So what does that mean? The first one, I can write it as, let's say, alpha 1, uh, alpha 1 1 v 1 plus alpha 1 2 v 2 okay this will give me the first column right do you agree what about the second column a different linear combination so maybe i'll write it as alpha 2 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 2 v 2 right i can write this is this visible properly yeah. okay last one is alpha 2 2 v 1 plus alpha 2 oh so, sorry did i write uh, 1 1 1 2 2 1 2 2 3, 1, 3, 2. Okay. I'll get this. Right. Same. This both are equal. Right. So, okay. Now, can I write this in a slightly different fashion? What am I doing? I'm doing a linear combination of columns. Right. That's what I'm doing. So, what kind of, suppose I want to take a matrix and consider linear combination of columns. What should I do? Multiply by a vector. Right. The coefficient will give me this thing. You agree? So that means if I take V1, if I take V2 and write it as alpha 1 1 alpha 1 2, what do you get? This is like AX, right? AX will give me linear combination of columns. Remember, I, I think I had shown that earlier, right? AX is basically linear combinations of the columns of A where the coefficients are given by the entries of X, right? So entries of X are alpha 1 1 alpha 1 2 columns are v1 v2 right so this will give me the first entry right do you agree so what happens to the second entry it's alpha 2 1 alpha 2 2 right that will give me the second entry which is this column right what happens to the third i don't know uh, maybe orange alpha 3 1 alpha 3 2 right this will give me the third right so basically, this whole matrix, I can write it like this, right? So let's look at this. Let me call this as C matrix. And the other one as, uh, just give me an alphabet, no? So what should I? I should call this as A. I'll call this as C. And then uh, this coefficient matrix, right? So what should I write? Maybe R. OK, I'll call it as R, right? Do you agree with this? Fine? OK. So basically what we have is A, I can write it as CR. The columns of C are linearly independent. R will give me the coefficients, right? Okay. So now um, what can you say about uh, the rank of A now? So in terms of C and R. So definitely um, the column rank is 2, right? In this case, 2 linearly independent. What can you say about row? Hmm? What can you say about row? Okay, so uh, this is 2 cross 3, this is 3 cross 2, okay. Okay, so what can you say about uh, the rank of uh, this guy? So what can you say about the row rank of this guy, R? 2, right? It cannot, 2 or less, we, well, it could be 1 also, we don't know. But at least, at most 2, not more than that, right? So if the row rank of this uh, R is 2, what can you say about row rank of A? Can somebody think of it? Hmm? 
what can you say hmm? what can you say about row rank of a so it's number of linearly independent rows right if the row rank of suppose let's say row rank of r is 1 itself that means this is some two times this suppose so okay let's write that okay so a is cr right but r has row rank of 1 so let me write this r1 alpha times r1 this is what you have okay now what can you say about row rank of a what can you say about row rank of a Huh? Is it uh, one or uh, two? Can it be two? Huh? Can it be two? Yes or no? Huh? Row rank. Okay, number of linearly independent rows. How many linearly independent rows of A you can have? Hmm? Any any guess? Huh? What is that? Sorry. Um, row rank is one. Why do you say that? Uh, well. Uh, Let's not worry about elementary transformation. So, uh, not elementary transformation of R. Okay, so that is also correct. I can do uh, elementary transformation and get zero in one place and R one in other place. So, what is elementary transformation? That's also something that I can write, right? So, for example, you have C. What I can do is I can do elementary transformations E one, E two, for example, to get. something that is like this right so something and zero here do you agree i can do that and i can do the reverse exactly inverse right because these are elementary right so what i have here is this kind of a matrix right with one row not being zero and the other one being completely zero right that kind of a matrix so now what can you say about the row rank there i mean it's clear right intuitively is it clear at least i, I don't want to rigorously prove it uh, it's not that difficult but is this clear it be it cannot be more than one right so essentially the claim is row rank of or uh, row rank of a is less than or equal to 1 here right it cannot be more than one do you agree well uh, can it happen when then you are you are in trouble right so the, the column rank of this is 2 can you have a row rank of 1 uh, it cannot be i am just giving an example okay so if this is not the case which let's say the row rank of this can be at most 2 right well this is an example of row rank of 1 but what is in general r r is like this right so r1 r2 So what is the rank of this? Less than or equal to two, right? It cannot be more than two for sure, right? Okay. So uh, in fact, row rank of this uh, is less than or equal to two. So that means row rank of A should be less than or equal to two, right? It cannot be more than two because row rank of R is also less than or equal to two, right? So now I have row rank of A less than or equal to two. Now what should I do? Huh? What happens if I do the same thing for A transpose? I can do similar, right? What is A transpose? The columns become row and row becomes column, and I apply the same thing. So you have to fill the gap now. So essentially, it turns out that the row rank equal to column rank. Okay. I know that is little vague here, uh, but uh, I want you to uh, think about this and go through the notes at least once. but you should never forget the fact that row rank equal to column rank you should never forget the fact that uh, rank plus uh, null is the dimension okay if you have an n cross n matrix the rank of a plus the nullity of a should be equal to n n is the dimension right so that is something that you should always uh, remember because it's very very uh, important
Okay, so now I think uh, let's move on from, let's slightly move away from rank and so on. So I think this is enough information about uh, rank.